Welcome to the Aramir uh, Roundtable. Today is the 5th of June, 2019. Uh, and my friend Bruno uh, uh, is going to be showing us his uh, software. So uh, welcome, Bruno. Nice to have you back. Oh, thank you. But today is about the Rhino, not the software. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, yeah. My mistake. I thought we were doing the software today. No, no. So, no we're doing the software next week. And Michael, Michael is, is around to ah. introduce him as well, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get him promoted. So um, uh, before we get too far into it, the, the normal disclosure that uh, Aramir is not a broker, dealer, or investment advisor. It's for educational purposes only. Options and futures involve risks and are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. If you'd like to read the whole thing, pause the video, or go to the bottom of any of our web pages. Let me just pause the video and we'll get uh, set up here. Uh, I'm ready, yeah. Okay, and we're back. So, uh, sorry about that, folks. I thought today was going to be the software, but uh, we're talking about the Rhino. And uh, yes, because um, I, I mean, as some of you or many of you know, um, I'm dedicating a lot of my time to developing a new platform. So, I have a less time available for the Rhino. So, I'm, I'm, I have the pleasure of uh, uh, welcoming Michael Schwartz, uh, who's joining me to to co-host this service. And I wanted to have a, a, another presentation on the Rhino, not so technical, but more to actually show um, how I handle the service. Um, and uh, the, the, the new, some new variations of the Rhino. I mean, we can have uh, questions and answers towards the end, but it's, it's mostly about introducing Michael, who is going to be handling the the, the monthly Rhino on the, on the Russell. Okay, so uh, as a um, reminder, um, because some people think the Rhino is just another variations on the RTT, and it is true that um, in the bull market 2017, um, I have actually been inspired because the, the, the RTT was definitely more lenient on the upside but overall, um, it is a conservative, very much delta neutral trading strategy. Uh, of all Brooklyn butterfly strategies, I think it's the one maybe with the RTT, uh, uh, allegedly. Um, the, 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 the Rhino is, is uh, quite conservative, keeping a del flat delta um, in most circumstances, most market conditions. So, um, the stress level is generally low. Of course, when the market sinks uh, rapidly, there's always uh, uh, timing can be an issue to adjust, but uh, not so much. I mean, uh, it's, it, there are not many adjustments. And in most situations, timing is not essential. Uh, I want to really emphasize how conservative it is, and I will show that uh, a bit later in the presentation that I actually ran two different rhinos. My rhino that is uh, probably the most, uh, a more cautious one and the regular more, uh, the one I called by the book, the standard rhino, so to say, um, which um, can be, which with p &L can be fluctuating more. Uh, it's still a conservative uh, a, a strategy. Delta is <clears throat> ranges from generally 25 to minus 25 for a, a, a fire broken wing butterfly uh, position. So it's, it's still compared to other, let's say the bearish butterfly or, or the M3, this is a very conservative, easygoing strategy. But um, we've had so many uh, volatility gyrations and crazy market swings that my own rhino has become more conservative, more cautious. Um, something that's, um, again, I'm not going to review all the different adjustments, but um, yes, um, in the, by the book, the one I call BTB, I, I, I try and limit the, the, the number and type of adjustments to something simple, but uh, in, in my own variation, um, for the sake of keeping Delta flat, uh, I may have, a, I would say, um, more, more tools at my disposal to, to adjust. 
to, to manage the Greeks. It's, it's more a Greek management trap of trade. It can be seen almost as a generic broken butterfly strategy. And that's why sometimes people are, if not lost, they think, well, this goes beyond their head with the, the generic, the, with, the, with my own var variation. So that's why I have reintroduced the, the by the book, which is basically something people can really hang on to and, and be more comfortable with. In terms of underlying instruments, uh, because of time constraints, I, I've only done the, the SPX Rhino, and I'm, I'm glad um, uh, uh, Mike is now giving me a helping hand to now uh, also trade it on the Russell. I'm not a big fan of the, of the Russell, to be honest. Uh, late last year, I tried, I tried to, to trade it both on the Russell and the SPX. And, well, maybe it was a difficult time in the fourth quarter when the market uh, tumbled. But um, I found that the SPX Rhino handled the fall much better than uh, on the Russell. So I'm happy to stick to the SPX and uh, 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 I'll leave the Russell to, 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 to Michael. Um, I've tried, although again, I can't do everything, but it seems that it's working fine also on ES futures. Um, so some people may like that because of uh, uh, more uh, lenient uh, span margin. So it can be an, an alternative. And uh, so far I've seen, because as I said earlier, I'm very much uh, interested in modeling and all the theoretical stuff. And the volatility surface on the ES future is about the same as on the SPX. So there's no reason to change the rules in the slightest if you switch from the SPX to, to, to the SP future. Um, um, I, I just mentioned other instruments. Yes, possibly. Um, but I'd be careful. <clears throat> I know that, again, I could be losing a, a few people who think that the Rhino is purely a Delta-based uh, strategy. And it is 90% true. But Delta is affected by Vega, and we when we have um, huge volatility swings, your Delta can change very rapidly. Um, so um, uh, the, the vol surface, the skew, so probably more advanced topics need to be taken into consideration before uh, it can, uh, the strategy can be applied on, on, to, on other instruments. It's not impossible, but it's, it's, it's more work because I need to study it, to analyze it uh, uh, in more depth. <clears throat> so in the last uh, three years, um, I mean, 2015, 2016, 2016 went after the Brexit elections and the uh, presidential elections in the US. Um, up to 2016, it was quite easy to trade the Rhino. Um, and uh, it was the time in early 2016 when I took over from Brian Larson. I looked at his uh, uh, back tests. Um, <clears throat> I always take back, back tests with a pinch of salt. But it looked like it was a very, very stable trade. And it was um, 2013, 14, 15, 16, even 17 that when volatility dropped, it was still a manageable, manageable trade. Um, but We've seen a lot in 2018 and uh, 2019 is also a little bit crazy with a, uh, I think we, the SP was at what, 2300 or so uh, around Christmas and, uh, and then it recovered by 600 points. Volatility dropped, but not as badly as in 2017. So um, <clears throat> again, even though it's a Delta based strategy, we have to look at the market environment and how that volatility behaves. It's, for me, it's, it's important. So in the, in the group, in the alert service, I try and, um, not, I wouldn't say teach, but make people aware of maybe looking a little bit under the bonnet, looking at um, other factors that have an indirect effect on Delta and of course on trade management. But um, to, I mean, not only to, of course, like any alert service, the discipline, the routine, all those things are important. 
there's an element of hand holding and helping, and I'm, I'm glad to, to do that. But um, the other thing is that um, we have to really um, look a bit deeper if we want to um, learn a trade beyond a given strategy and be able to then turn a trade into one own, one's own trade. And for, to me, that's the objective. Uh, uh, some students come and go, and I'm happy when they go that they, they, they feel comfort, co comfortable and confident about trading on their own. And I think they take away more than just learning a strategy. And that's what uh, is important to me. Um, so as some people know, uh, my, my, my interest uh, has been into also developing a new, new uh, platform because I found that in 2018, um, the calculations on uh, option view were sometimes a little bit berserk. So um, the idea is to, of course, have better tools and also adapt the strategy to changing environments. Um, we, we, even in the last week, I mean, uh, the SP has, uh, has risen by 100 points almost uh, since Monday. I mean, we have to take care of that. And we can't just, um, in my view, we can't just, um, you know, take it easy, keep it simple. Of course, it's, the objective is to keep it as simple as possible. But simplicity is the ultimate objective when you know what you're doing. Well, hey, can I jump in here, Bruno? This is Mike. Sure. So, um, and thanks for having me and thanks for allowing me to uh, participate um, in an incredible service. Um, you know, uh, there are two ends of this spectrum, and I apologize, I've got some software, I've <laughs> got Toss running in the background. Um, but, um, you know, there are two ends of the spectrum. Um, there are, is the simple, you know, black and white, if then else approach. Um, and then there's what uh, a lot that Bruno gets into as it relates to understanding the nuances of a trade, understanding how uh, changing environments uh, the vol environments, skew environments, whatever they might be, um, even just average true range as a measure of vol, uh, can really change, um, you know, how a structure reacts, uh, you know, reacts in those various environments. Um, I will say that what, what gravitated me towards the Rhino was it is very forgiving um, at the onset obviously a very, very flat T0 line. And to me, um, you know, it, it, it is about, if you are going to make adjustments, if you are going to change, um, you know, what's going on in your software, uh, I'm sorry, in your trade, um, you know, the Rhino's great. It, it is like the M3 in that there's not a gun to your head I mean, I put on one yesterday, uh, or the August one yesterday, or the day before, and, and you know, with such a volatile move, um, we just had to add another uh, broken wing butterfly, and that was it. There wasn't a lot of agita going on with that. The one I've had for July, all I had to do was roll it uh, with some profits. Other than that, with the huge swings that we've had, it really hasn't taken much tweaking. So, um, you know, if you're going to learn a strategy uh, that, you know, like any good strategy is going to take time to learn, th this is a good one because it's not going to bite you in the butt, you know, too much. Uh, it's very manageable. The risk is very manageable. Um, you can learn the, you know, we'll call by the book method to, to really understand the nuances and learn where the edge is. And then, as Bruno said, learn some other methods of adjusting it as environments change, learning how it does react to various environments, and then adding your own personality to it. But with that said, again, this is a, this is a trade, I believe, that can be trade, and you can be successful with the buy-the-book method. And if you're ever going to learn, uh, you know, about these structures, uh, this, is a, this is a great trade for that.
All right, now I'll get up my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And um, you're absolutely right. And also it shows that we are very much complementary in, in this service because uh, um, you will probably ground me <laughs> when needed because sometimes I can um, fly pretty high and go into topics. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's what's good about this time of teamwork. Uh, you're absolutely right. The, 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 the by the book or the conventional or standard uh, Rhino does very well in most environments. Um, I had to tweak it a bit towards the RTT in 2017. Um, they, so, you know, it's all statistics, it's all distributions. And I would say that 80% of the time, the Rhino will be a walk in the park. So I would say that 80% of the time, following Michael's guidance and you know, simpler adjustments will just be fine. Um, and which is actually better because I will have less work <laughs> to do. But uh, I, I am very much interested in um, th those contingency plans and the, those other scenarios which don't look that nice. So that's why um, I think, and that's probably, uh, well, yeah, maybe the, 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 the slides are not exactly in the, in the right order, but um, I think, in, in, yes, that's the target audience. Cons um, it shows that it can, it can be uh, useful to many different traders um, and, and um, um, uh, uh, starting with a, a fair understanding of Greeks and sometimes, like I, I introduced um, uh, when the market was peaking uh, in March, April, I said, well, be careful about VOMA. Uh, for many traders, VOMA, what is that? Okay, that's just one, one other Greek. But if I had, um, if I had, um, had a platform that could have calculated VOMA uh, in January last year, uh, I would have seen all the alarm bells ringing because of uh, the Vega Geddon that we had uh, in early Feb. So sometimes when the market really behaves in a weird fashion, you need to dig it a bit deeper. Yeah. So that's why I, I think this now new alert service will definitely be suitable to a very wide audience sharing the same principles of a very conservative trade, uh, low stress, low management, timing is not essential. I mean, things haven't changed. It's just that, um, that in my view, even though as, as, a, as a mentor and so-called expert, I would like my students to stay with me forever. But no, I mean, uh, the handholding has to end at some point. Traders have to start trading on their own. So um, they have to take away something. And to me, if they take away more than just a rhino, but they, they feel comfortable in trading a rhino or their own rhino, their own broken butterfly strategy, uh, and they can handle uh, different market situations, all the better. Yeah. And of course, in 80% of the time, they will do well with a standard rhino, but it's still good. It's like when you, you fly an airplane, you know, Taking off and landing, you learn that in a few hours. But it's all about contingency plans and emergency. That's, that's why I think um, I, am I am probably more of interest to people who want to learn emergency rules. Yeah. So let, let's go back to the previous slide. All, so I've, I've shown that it, it can be traded on different instruments. It can be traded at different levels, but also uh, found out that, I mean, I started tra trading, started trading a, a faster variant called the baby rhino, excuse me, <coughs> a few years ago, and it was quite successful. And last year, I thought that, well, because of my busy agenda, I also maybe need to look at a slower one, which I call the giant rhino where we introduce more horizontal layering, but by entering very early, delta, delta stays flat for a very long time. Theta takes longer to pick up. So it's not a trade that's gonna make a lot of money, but it, it, I've, I've, I've actually started, I think it's September last year. So it went through the, the fall and the recovery and the trade is still doing okay. Excuse me. <coughs> 
so it shows that the, the, this Rhino node not only can be traded on different instruments at, at different uh, levels of depth, but also it can be adjusted to the pace you are more comfortable with. So the, the flagship Rhino will still be the monthly Rhino, which I enter generally about 77 DTE, and I enter uh, and I exit gradually. I mean, I won't go back into the details, but on pr different profit target levels, from 35 DT to 14 DT. I can trade it uh, sometimes up to expiration. It's more advanced. And for the, the buy the book Rhino, I will definitely stop by 14 DT. So the buy the book is meant to be a, a, a more beginner style Rhino. That being said, sometimes I bend the rules. Like in May, when the market um, started shaking a bit, um, I, I had to fight for that trade a bit longer. So, and I think I, if I remember, I kept the, the May Rhino um, up to expression a week. But I have said on, on, uh, on the alerts that, well, you should close. If you want to hang in with me, you're welcome, but you should close. We've passed 14 DT. So I do send a lot of warnings. If you want to stay with the buy the book, the beginner ver version, you have to, to even if you lose, you have to cut your loss by 14 DT. So now maybe, um, yeah, as, as, as we've already mentioned, we have different styles. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Michael was too shy to add his input. Yeah, his I, yeah, sorry. You know, I thought I sent it to you, but, um, you know, I've got, you know, 20 years uh, trading experience. Um, uh, many of you who are familiar with me know I've traded the bearish butterfly for many, many years. Um, and, uh, you know, and while I'm familiar with some of the other, uh, let's say less volatile trades like the M3, I, I prefer the Rhino, um, just because, um, the approach was slightly different as to how, how the trade is managed, especially as the market moves up, um, using calendars versus trying to tail the market and, you know, go for a pullback, um, and, and again, what, what, what's really great about, as Bruno was saying, the difference between the two of us, um, Bruno's, I would say, you know, much more detail, um, active, um, very, you know, again, Greek oriented, which is great. Uh, you will learn a ton from him. You will hopefully learn about the rules from me. <laughs> um, but uh, Bruno's experience and how he manages and, and looks at these, uh, you know, the various components that are affecting a trade above and beyond um, the normal rules is, is unbelievable. Um, and that, that his input alone um, is worth uh, anything you're going to pay. Um, for any kind of service because he, he's just so active it's great <laughs> thank you michael but uh, I, I want you to fill in the blank at the bottom yeah talk about yourself if you can yeah yeah as i said um you know 20 years trading experience mostly options i've traded all assets um i've done some coaching with folks um you know uh, but uh love the bearish butterfly that's a trade love butterfly structures um, and, um, you know, so that's, uh, my two cents about my, you know, my experience. Okay. Let's carry on. So yeah, um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead of the slide, but so let, no, no need to, to go too deep on this. The, oh yeah. The service description. Yeah. <clears throat> Most alert services you get, um, a short, um, short note, now and then, and then uh, you get order and fills, boom. I, I believe, and that's probably where um, I, I, I'm also quite uh, um, um, disciplined in a way, that I, I believe all traders need to have a, a trading plan for the day. So I do send morning notes every single day so that you can uh, prepare for the day, uh, looking at how volatility is behaving, markets are behaving. I don't use extensive uh, technical analysis, but I have a market view, which is uh, more often right than wrong. Um, 
And so you, you can prepare for the day. And sometimes if I've got a, a clear view about um, what adjustment or entry or scaling I'm going to do, uh, I, I send that as kind of a pre-alert in advance. Then also because I, I think of people like me who are interactive brokers, which is definitely not as user-friendly as TOS, I send my messages in three, in a sequence of three, always. Plan, so you have to, time to prepare your combo, then order, so between plan and order, of course I've prepared mine, but uh, I check for the mid, the theoretical prices. So I try and, uh, and find a, a, a range of mid prices that where a fill can be found, and then I send a fill. So it's always same discipline and routine, plan, order, and fill. And then because it's also important to have a, a review of your trading week, I record uh, two videos every Saturday or every, every weekend. One is the market outlook, and one is how the, the, on the trades, weekly recap, where I analyze the trades and look ahead for the, the coming week. So I think the more prepared you are also, I mean, those things can be secondary to many traders, but in, as a matter of fact, the more prepared you are, Lower, the lower your stress level is. So you don't, nobody needs me for that, but I think it's important in the service that actually I, I, I can provide that so that people um, can learn to do that on their own when they are ready to trade on their own. We have a slot on, uh, on Zoom uh, through um, Aramir to have a group meeting. So that's on demand. So sometimes we have a meeting, sometimes not. The, the, the more active discussions are, are on my own Rhino Slack, Rhinos and Plies. Um, and um, um, some people sometimes miss an adjustment or they've decided, it, it's, not, it's not like people, students follow um, the rules and the alerts exactly to the letter. Sometimes it takes, it, it gradually they, they start trading their own trade. And that's fine. That's perfect. So, um, and, but some, if they need assistance saying, well, I took the liberty of uh, adjusting it slightly differently. Can you look at, um, can you have a look at my trade? And that's fine. I mean, I'm very happy to do that. So really, I think in terms of service, it's a lot more than just a, a broadcasting alert service. Um, and, I think for, for, for traders who are not uh, uh, used to this type of, uh, of uh, tutoring, I think it's a, it's a big plus in my view. <clears throat> now let's have a look at uh, current trades. These are screenshots I, I took yesterday. So this is a baby rhino. Baby rhino is, has been, I've, I've um, resumed trading the baby rhino in March. And so in a rising market and then a uh, roller coaster market. And it has done quite well. It has done quite well. I still do it on the Russell. Uh, I could do it on the SPX, but it's more a matter of, uh, of habit. I mean, uh, I used to trade on the Russell. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, for, if you don't know the baby rhino, it can see, it can look as a complex trade. And it, it is in a way because there, there are a lot of tools at our disposal, but the guideline is quite simple. Keep your theta delta ratio as little as possible and keep your uh, Vega theta ratio as small as possible. And I'm not teaching anything. It's not rocket science. A weekly trade is a theta trade. You want to trade weeklies because you want to, really cash in in the acceleration of theta towards the end of a trade. And that's all, of, all what it is. <coughs> so all I do here is help finding the right adjustments to always balance those ratios. You can see uh, it was as yes, yesterday, my delta was flat, delta to theta was like zero, and my vega to theta was a little bit high because of course, um, now um, I'm kind of trading the hedge. Market recovered strongly. I'm under the calendars. 
So, of course, I have more inf bigger influence from the calendars. I will then switch on to uh, one later, and I will show you how the trade behaves now. This is the, the report since I started, I think, in early March. As, um, uh, unfortunately, on one, I can't have uh, the unrealized profit. So, the, to, to, this week's trade, is, uh, um, this figure is absolutely wrong. But it shows that it's, um, it's a quite a stable, uh, uh, never lose much, never make much. But on average, when I used to trade it more regularly in 2016, 2017, I would say 2 to 3% a week is quite achievable. And since I've resumed in March, um, um, maybe I've done, I haven't done so well, or maybe the markets have been a bit more difficult, but I've done about 1.35% a week, considering the planned capital for this trade is 10K. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the standard um, SPX, or, or so-called B2B by the book. As you can see, the current July trade is doing very, very well. We are um, actually closed. Um, the June SPX BTB had profit target um, before the market actually started tumbling last week. So a bit of luck, timing was good anyway. So, so the, 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 June, the June actually reached profit target and, and this one is on its way to also uh, reach a 2,500 profit target. So it is almost a, 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 quite a rare occurrence that generally the profit target, the 10% profit target should be hit maybe once a year, but to be hit twice in a row, that's actually pretty good. So as you can see, it's, a, it's a quite a, a, a simple structure. It, it is basically a broken butterfly and this funny shape is only because when the market fell, I did a, a, a massive rollback to cover all the way to 2700. So this trade is doing fine. This is the current uh, regular Rhino. As I, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a more cautious one. Uh, sometimes a bit more touched up, uh, touch, touches up. Um, maybe a, a bit more strikes. Usually now that we are um, around 40, uh, 40 odd uh, DT, I start simplifying the trade. So maybe a little bit more maintenance, but really nothing too complicated. And this trade is doing also fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's, here's the, the giant rhino. As you can see from the, the round shape on this one, it's... Uh, it's a matter of layering, so reallocating capital from cycle to cycle. Uh, the June cycle was closed uh, a few weeks ago. So here I've got only July and August. This trade is generally very, very flat. <clears throat> I've got a little bit more negative delta because I, I, I fla um, I've, this is um, additional to the standard rules, but I have actually placed a, a, C a CCS here you get a bit more premium out of this trade, but generally it's a very flat type of, uh, of uh, trade. And this one, stay, the delta stays flat all along. You basically, all you have to do is, um, is um, um, roll over capital from cycle to cycle. There are very, very few adjustments on this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Mike, if you want to, because I, I have to cough, so if you want to take over from now. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, well, <laughs> um, so from a, yeah, from a summary standpoint, um, you know, as I said, um, what I think is going to be great about, um, the two of us is, is our different styles. Um, so, um, first of all, you, you know, for me, again, it's going to be the basics of following a trade plan, uh, by the book, learning the structure, keeping things, I'm a simple guy, keeping things as simple as possible. And on the other hand, you've, you know, you've got Bruno's approach, 
um, with multiple trades. And, and, I, and I might do that. Rune and I discussed, you know, putting my own flavor to the rut portion of it. And in time, I think um, I'll do that. Right now, I'm learning the platform, um, trying to, uh, you know, I've been less communicative than uh, Bruno has for sure, as I started to cut my teeth and start the first two structures. Uh, over time, um, you know, we'll, we'll be a little bit more consistent uh, in, in at least our communication styles. And then hopefully I'll add some, you know, nuances to the rut side. But uh, if you want to learn from, you know, two different approaches, two different styles, um, you know, th this is a great, great place to be um, because of the activity level that is provided um, and you can get whatever you're looking for. So. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, I, I, I muted my mic just so, that, so that I could uh, clear my throat. <clears throat> so we do have some time available, so maybe I can uh, show my, uh, how do I get? Oh, did you see uh, Tim's question uh, about the planned capital? Oh, planned capital is uh, 25K per cycle. Uh, because of overlaps, it's, uh, I've, I haven't changed anything from the original Rhino. It's still, it's still a Rhino and a half, so it's $37,000, allowing for overlapping. Uh, of course, it was hard work juggling with capital um, and very low IV because we, uh, we sometimes had to keep the trade until very late, so we had sometimes three cycles on. <clears throat> But generally, um, with two cycles, when you start peeling off, uh, while, while the, the, the new one is uh, getting, getting into shape, um, it's fine. Um, at, this, at this time, we have uh, June is closed. Um, July and August take maybe 60% of plant capital. Um, I'm not like John Locke that says, well, you should have uh, capital aside and it's only, it's only a, a guideline, but sometimes I will ex exceed ca uh, plant capital. I never do that. I mean, um, uh, I'm very, very strict in, in terms of uh, uh, capital allocation. So it's never more than 25K per cycle and never more than 37.5 for the whole cycle. For, for so, riders, yeah. Bruno, so... Um, you know, the one thing I've noticed about, you know, I don't, and so I, you, you have much more experience. I'm, I'm very new to the Rhino as it relates to, you know, other structures that I've traded and stuff like that. And I know we discuss, we say it's clean capital, 25K, we're doing five lot uh, butterflies on, um, is, is there any reason because, you know, based on the adjustments that you couldn't do this with a one lot? Um, in the original Rhino, uh, because of the balance between uh, the bro broken butterfly combo and the upside hedges, um, and generally, I would say again, in 80% of the time, you will need two to three uh, call calendars for. Um, uh, I'm talking. I'm talking about the SPX. Right. Two, 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 three for about five broken butterflies. Gotcha. So, so it's not exactly the same ratio. So uh, it can actually. I have done some private tutoring with a a guy who's got only 25k on his uh, Rick T account, and uh, so as I said, I, I, something I can do on Slack. And I can do for people who want to try with a, a, a lower amount of capital. Yes, it can be done, but the adjustments will not be 100% standard. It can be done, but uh, you know we have already uh, different instruments and different uh, <laughs> there are different variants and different paces in terms of baby to regular monthly to giant. Um, I could do a, but it can be done. But I'm not going to. A trade a, a less capital intensive. I mean, it's, it's just going to be too many. I'm going to lose many people because uh, of the different. So yes, it can be done, and I, I will be happy to help. But it's um, it's another trade basically. Yeah. 
No, I mean, the only reason I ask is because with the bearish butterfly, you don't have um, those kind of, um, you know, like you said, there, there might be a different ratio uh, for the adjustments of the calendars versus your, your size of the, um, of the butterflies of the broken wing butterflies, where in the bearish butterfly, really, there's no reason why you couldn't trade, you know, one lot. So when somebody says five lot, I always question, question that, it, you know, is there a specific reason as it relates to adjustments with, in this case, you're, you know, the answer is yes. It, it, it could impact how you adjust by the book. So um, yeah. that's why you have a five lot minimum. Yeah. So here's the by the book for July. As I said earlier, we definitely on track for profit target by 35 DG. So we've got nine days to go to 2,500. If we're not there, we should be pretty close. Uh, Delta is flat. Something that um, is not part of the, the standard guidelines, but which I looked closely, which is, is gamma. Uh, so I'll always try and have a flat T plus zero over a largest possible range. And gamma, of course, plays a role there. So all those things are part of the teaching through this alert service. And um, as, I, as you said, and I said too, yeah, we entered um, um, August. It was the good vault pop um, um, on Monday. So I, I think this one I entered actually on uh, sometime last week. Um, so th this, um, this trade is also, I mean, when volatility rises, I mean, you, <clears throat> again, in most circumstances, you will start with a slight negative delta, which is something I'm more comfortable with. But this, in, in this instance, delta is flat to slightly positive. Nothing to worry about, but it's probably a little bit more positive than it would be normally at this time. So that's something also I, I, I mentioned in, in the discussions so that you need to be aware this is a slightly different environment. And if you look at the volatility term structure, you see that we, besides June, where volatility has dropped enormously, we're still in a very flat term structure. It looks all rosy because it's uncovered and it looks like the 2700 or 2730 is um, um, a good support and the market is going to rally. Well, there's still some nervousness in the market. So I was, by, in, in my own analysis of the market, I share everything on, in, on two discussions and into my notes so that traders can learn to see and analyze what's going on, you know, below the surface. Because generally, as I said, we should have a, a probably minus three to minus five delta. So it's nothing to be concerned about, but it's a little bit different than usual. And this is the August B2B, which is a simpler shape. But this one has been, it was, it was three broken butterflies, placed around 2070, uh, upper longs on, a, I think it was uh, 2800 or 2775. And when the market uh, moved by more than 1% above the upper longs, I, it triggered this, the, the alert to scale in. So I sent a scale in order to, this morning to go to full size. So uh, uh, this one is really as simple as possible. Well, I've got little voice today, so maybe it's time for questions, if there are. I don't see any new questions. Okay. So, Mike, you've started putting trades on in the service? Yes, I can show you. Um, how do I share? Or... Uh, I think Bruno probably needs to stop sharing, and then you can okay. share. There you go. Okay. All right, can you see my screen? Uh, I can. All right, great. So this is the July structure. Um, it doesn't include uh, the one roll down, but basically after commissions, when we rolled down, the structure was flat, but you can see as far as, you know, toss is concerned and I do model it in option view, but flat as a pancake really, um, and this is what it's been like the entire month. It's, it's, it's been very wacky, but, um, you know, not a lot of profits, but again, not a lot of risks. Uh, deltas have been flat through this whole thing, and the gamma has been 
incredibly flat the entire time. Um, the, let's see, why is this doing this? Um, hmm. Why are you not giving me the option to show other trades? I've never seen this. Hmm. Don't you love live demos? <laughs> yeah, I, I've never had this issue. It's like, what other structure you want to show? You pull it up and uh, maybe that. There we go. All right. Here's the August structure. And as Bruno had mentioned, you know, all right, so um, within one day of the move, we had to, you know, add a, a second structure. Um, putting on the first structure um, was very interesting because normally this leans slightly at the at the beginning, uh, negative delta, and it was positive delta. Um, so um, it was definitely I could see a huge difference on what skews do, and that's why you know um, taking good notes, journaling, understanding what what a, a structure looks like when you normally set it up, what the T zero line looks like. And then when you put on a new one and all of a sudden, hey, this doesn't look like the normal um, T0 line, you know, you got to question yourself, what's going on, what's changed? And both Bruno and I noticed that the skew stru structure changed when we put on August. Um, you know, it's just a, a change in the markets with volatility spiked up a bit. Um, but anyway, you know, uh, love this flat delta, um, really no, short-term risk and that's why I love these trades. Um, that's why I gravitate to them because with a huge amount of market movement that we're in right now, um, you can sleep well at night knowing that with a huge flush up or down, uh, your, your risk is really contained, which is fabulous. So. Okay, um, so the, I guess the plan going forward is uh, there was a question from Tim about uh, the service. It's, it's only one service. Uh, it's kind of like, like I said, the way Dan Harvey and I have been running the road trips. Um, I was doing futures, Dan was doing SPX. And so how are you, you guys dividing it up again? So, um, so Bruno is going to do all the SPX with all the variations by the buck, giant, baby, weeklies, and all those types of things. I'm going to start doing the rut. I'm just going to start with a by the book approach, keep it simple. Um, and then, um, you know, as time progresses, progresses, if there is a, you know, um, we see a need in the community uh, for more Russell structures. We can certainly entertain adding more of that. Um, but, the, you know, the bottom line is between the two of us, you're just getting tons and tons of, of variations and, um, you know, for lack of a better word, indirect mentoring and coaching based on especially Bruno's style with the variations that he's doing. It's unlike any, any other service that's out there. Now, um, the pricing, are you gonna keep it the way it is now or are you gonna change the pricing? We haven't really talked about that. Uh, no thoughts in changing it at this point. <laughs> no, you're, you're the bus stop. <laughs> oh, well, um, I, I guess we'll, uh, we'll keep it the way it is for now. Um, okay. See, I know I've got a link here. There's a, a deal, the, the first month I think is only uh, like $35, it's like a 75% off. So it's pretty affordable to try it. We, we didn't make it free because there's costs involved like sending out SMSs and things like that. So it's not quite free, but you know, 35 bucks is a, a nice little dinner and it's not too expensive. Um, but um, it's a, it's a good service. The Rhino is a very robust trade, uh, has pretty good performance over time. Um, and I'm sure with the Mike and Bruno both working on the different symbols, you'll get a lot of education and learning from it too. So, you know, the, the trade alert services at Aramir are <clears throat> basically designed to help you uh, learn how to trade, watch a professional, a full-time trader, and uh, learn from them by asking questions. So, now you have two brains to pick with the Rhino and two different trading styles. So it's a, 
It's a nice uh, change with the rhino. Yep. And maybe also two different types of thinking, the, the French way and the American way. <laughs> well, and uh, Dan and I always found when we did the uh, monthly webinars and, and the weekly video recordings together, there's always a lot of uh, back and forth. And, um, you know, we, uh, we work on each other's ideas. You know, Dan might say something, I try to take it another direction or a different way. Um, I'm sure it'll be the same with you guys. So. Uh, the service will grow a lot faster and in, in different directions. So it's pretty but exciting. It, yeah. But even in, term, even in terms of a longer trading day or working day, I mean, I, I sometimes chat with traders uh, in the European morning session. And, um, and of course, I, I couldn't do um, late US time uh, webinars and things like that. But then it's also where, where Michael can take over. So we, we do cover about 18 to 20 hours of the day, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so uh, if there's nothing else, we can wrap it up unless you have uh, anything before we, we leave. I'm, I'm good, and uh, um, I'll see you next week for presentation of my platform. Okay, so same time next week, and yeah. uh, we'll get to see Bruno's new software in action. Um, okay. how, how close do you think you are to releasing that? Uh, my version is about ready, and which is basically the, the same core, the same calculations. Um, and the bigger version that my partner is working on, um, alpha version, maybe end of June, early July. Yeah. Okay. It's not far behind, actually. It's, yeah. So it should be this summer before uh, when people can get their hands on it. At least a, a test version, yeah. And maybe, hopefully, we'll be able to release something by September. Yeah. Okay, great. So after the holiday, yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it uh, and also the Rhino. So thanks, thanks again, gents, and we will uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks.